All right, here's free response three of the AP Physics 1 2023 exam. Solutions aren't out, so these are my best guess first stab at solutions. If there are any mistakes, I will update the PDF and I will also put the pinned comment to note any mistakes that I made. So a small block of mass M0 is attached to the end of a spring of spring constant K0. I'm gonna put that on there. Attached to a rod on the horizontal table. The rod is attached to a motor so the rod can rotate at various speeds about its axis. When the rod is not rotating, the block is at rest and the spring is at unstretched length L, okay? All frictional forces are negligible. At time t equals t1, the rod is spinning such that the block moves in a circular path with a constant tangential speed v1, and the spring is stretched a distance d1. Okay, uh, I shouldn't figure one. At time t equals t2, the rod is spinning such that the block moves in a circular path with constant angular speed, tangential speed v2, and the spring is stretched a distance d2, where d2 is greater than d1. Okay, fair enough. On the following dots, represent draw the force that exerted on the block by the uh, draw the force that is exerted on the block by the spring at times t equals t1. The spring force must be represented by a distinct arrow uh, by the spring. So we only want the free body diagram, the force from the spring itself. Okay, draw the relative lengths of the vectors to reflect the relative magnitudes. Okay, so in both cases they're going to be pulling towards it, the center, right? So it's going to be because the 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 spring is stretched, so it's going to pull it in, right? So that's going to be directed towards the right. And for the other one, it's going to be more because it's been stretched more, right? So you have a, yeah, just because the D2 is greater than one, right? Remember, and the spring force is proportional to like how far you stretched it. And it's always going to be pulling, right? When you stretch it, because the spring always wants to go back to the equilibrium length. Okay, so that's what that should be. Referencing D1, D2, describe your reasoning for drawing the arrow lengths that you did. Well, because D2 is greater than D1 and the spring force is equal to Kx, um, therefore, the on the the spring force on two, which is equal to k d one d two, is greater than the spring force on one, which is equal to k times d one. Right. So basically, the spring is stretched more. I would use a little bit of words. The spring is stretched more in uh, the they want to just talk about the length. Okay, the stretched more in <clears throat> and <clears throat> uh, because d2 d2 is greater than d1 so the spring force is greater that's all you have to really say you just have to talk about the spring right like free body diagrams rules for springs that's it is the tangential speed v1 of the block at t equals t1 greater than less than or equal to equal to the tangential speed of v2 at the block of time t equals t2 justify your answer without using equations Okay, so is the speed, um, what they're asking, the tangential speed is greater. Well, it's definitely greater in T2. Um, that's because there's more, there's more centripetal force, right? And so, um, let me see if there's an easy way to like describe it. Um, yeah, I would say there's more centripetal force. There's more centripetal acceleration happening. So if there's more centripetal acceleration happening, because there's, okay, so I might line it up as like, there's a larger force, larger force means a larger acceleration, what kind of acceleration, centripetal acceleration, um, centripetal acceleration is larger than, so if it's a larger acceleration, centripetal acceleration is related to the speed, right? So um, I would say here that V2 is greater than V1, and I would say a larger uh, spring force means it's a larger net force, which implies the acceleration is larger. So in scenario, you know, in, in, in T2, the larger spring force, larger net force, acceleration is larger, which means the uh, centripetal acceleration and centripetal acceleration is greater. Now, that's a little bit hard because the radius is also greater. So that's like a, a little bit of a weaker arg argument. Um, but that's probably the easiest one that I'm gonna use. It's just the force is greater, so it has to be moving faster in such a way. I really don't like it that you can't use equations to make that justification, but like, I mean, it's just going to stretch more the faster it goes because you need it, it, you need a larger centripetal. You, you ultimately need a larger centripetal acceleration at, um, when it's moving faster. So that's the only time, like, I mean, that's like a base concept. If I want to turn, 
and I need to, the faster I go, the more of a centripetal force I need. It's like really, um, that's probably the best argument. I would go with that. I don't know if you need to say anything more than that. Consider a scenario where the block travels in a circular path. <clears throat> oh yeah, so the last part is here, so the velocity is greater. Okay. Consider a scenario where the block travels in a circular path where the spring is stretched a distance d from the unstretched length l. Determine expression for the magnitude the net force exerted on the block. Um, express your answer in terms of, okay, so this is just, you do, you're going to do F net equals MA, right? So the only, um, the only net force is going to be K times the spring force, which is K times D. Um, cause D is how much you stretched it. Okay. So you don't have to do D minus L is equal to M. And this is centripetal acceleration. So it's V squared over R. Um, now the R in this path. If you look at the R, the R is going to be the D plus the L. That's the radius of the path there, right? So we're going to use R is equal to D plus L. So it's going to MV squared over D plus L. And then we're allowed to use M0. This is K0, L, D. And I want you to solve for the net force on this thing. Oh, the net force is just this guy, K0, D. I don't know what. Okay. Okay, so that one's like a little bit like... I don't know, obvious, I guess. It's just the left side of the equation there. Um, <clears throat> because there's only one force acting on it. Um, tangential speed of the block, we would just, we would use this and then we would solve for the V squared. So it'd be K zero D times D plus L divided by M zero. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply by D plus L, divide by M zero, and then take the square root of that. So that would be my answer there, okay? Um, anything else is that, uh, that I only use those values? I think I did. KD M zero. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Does your equation for the tangential speed V agree with your reasoning in part a? Yeah, because if D is greater, right, then the velocity was greater. Yes. So I say with a great, when D two is greater than D one, that implies the V two is greater than V one as well. Right. And that's what we argued in um, part A. Part A, we were arguing, what were we arguing in part A? This part here is that, yeah, the speed here, the V2 would be greater, right? And so that's consistent with that because um, because D is in the numerator. You could say because, because D is in the numerator. Okay, and that would be the third question.